Guys, so what's up? Hello everyone. We're continuing our course on technical analysis. We left off at support and resistance levels. And today, we're going to continue with channels. I'll show you what channels are, how to draw them, not just after the fact. Like, oh, look, there was a channel here, but how to set them up in advance. So I'll show you a life hack for drawing channels ahead of time, so that they actually have predictive power. Because a channel drawn after the fact, like, oh, there was a channel here, is basically useless to anyone. We can't trade the past, we need to be trading the future. That's why a channel must, absolutely must, have predictive power. And you need to understand how to build such a channel. At the same time, I'll show you some modern methods for working with and drawing channels, that is, indicators that build channels for you, and often do a pretty good job. And after we go over static channels, I'll show you what dynamic channels are, meaning the ones that are built continuously. I'll show you indicators that do this just as well, ones you can rely on. And I'll give you a ready-made trading strategy based on dynamic channels. I'll even give you the open source code for it. Everything, of course, will be in the links in the description below the video. Feel free to use it and improve it. It will be profitable right from the start. But if you want to tweak it or improve it somehow, go ahead. Why not? I'll explain the basic principles of how it works so you can start using it right away. And in return, give me a like in advance and subscribe to my channel. And join me on Telegram so we can discuss things together. My name is Maxim. This is the Thinking Out Loud channel. Let's dive into channels. Why did I decide to talk about channels right after levels? Because a channel is literally just two parallel levels. They absolutely have to be parallel, otherwise it's not a channel. Otherwise, it's, I don't know, a trapezoid, whatever, a triangle, a wedge, but definitely not a channel. A channel is always two parallel levels. And psychologically, channels work exactly the same way as levels do. So if you haven't watched the video about levels, you'll see a link to it pop up somewhere here. Check it out, it's useful. It'll help you understand the psychology behind why channels work and what happens, for example, if a channel gets broken. So you can trade both, breakouts, bounces, movement within the channel, and movement after exiting the channel, all of these are important trading points where you can choose to make a trade or not. So let me start by showing you how to draw channels and, in general, how to do this technically. And I'll show you a life hack on how to do this a little bit in advance. And why a channel, just like levels, is actually a range. And how you can conveniently draw this so that everything is clear and easy to see. Look, here we have a chart of anything. Basically, it doesn't really matter what chart it is. And we need to learn how to draw channels. How are channels drawn? As I mentioned before, it's just two parallel levels. So, we take, um, two peaks, that is, to draw a level. We can basically draw a level through almost any two peaks, but ideally, of course, we shouldn't just pick random peaks, but those that are at least somewhat confirmed, right? Meaning, the ones that have had a retest. So, for example, let's say, I don't know, here are two peaks, here's one, here's the second, or maybe this one is the second, right? Like, this kind of peak, for instance, yeah? And then we can draw a long line through it like this. That's a level. As you can see, it even worked here. So it was breaking through, or bouncing off, breaking through. In other words, it was working in some way. And basically, we can, by holding down control, just press control on the keyboard and drag this level, immediately create a parallel line to it. So, there was this kind of little channel, right? Which, basically, is like this. Yeah, here it is. You can drop this line and add another one, uh, another level. Look, we connect two more points here. Just to remind you, these are all parallel lines. So they're all parallel because I didn't change their geometry. I just drew one line through two points and then cloned it. And as you can see, this actually has quite a decent amount of strength. I personally prefer to build channels this way, simply by cutting off with parallel lines and using the control key. But basically, if you click on the second line from the top, or rather the module of these drawing tools in TradingView, there's a tool called Parallel Channel. So, in principle, there is such a tool. You can take it and, like this, connect these two points. Just like that, draw the same straight line and stretch the channel out like this. See? And basically, for the most part, these channels are actually quite similar in many ways. Moreover, here we get the middle of the channel, this dashed line, which, as you can see, also had a lot of trading activity around it, maybe just a bit below the middle. That's why I think my way of drawing with lines is a bit more convenient. It seems to me that it reflects these levels a bit more accurately, the ones at 50%, though sometimes it might not be exactly 50, maybe 40, for example. But of course, you can use either method. As you can see, drawing a channel on historical data, where we can already see the whole chart, is really not a difficult task at all. But how do you adjust the channel going forward? What happens next? How do we draw a channel so that it has predictive power? Let me show you now. Let me delete this channel so it doesn't get in our way. I don't really like it, so I'll leave these lines instead. Yeah. So, first of all, look. 
We have a certain level that hasn't been broken yet, it hasn't been breached, and basically, there's a chance it might still work somewhere, right? That's why we leave it, and let's take a look at the price right now. And here we can see an obvious triangle, which we haven't gone through yet, and which I haven't talked about so far, but I will cover it in the next videos. It looks like this, and it doesn't really give us anything, at least simply because today we're talking about channels. So, how can we predict whether a channel will form on the market in the future or not? Spoiler alert, it definitely will. Basically, the market tends to move in channels, and this is something you can actually take advantage of. And here's a life hack. To draw a channel, all we really need are two points, one to set the level, and a second, assumed point of support. On this chart, we can draw two channels, an ascending one and a descending one. So, we can anticipate the price moving either up or down, because, well, trading and technical analysis in general is always about probabilities. It's not just random, it's always about probabilities. Now look, if I click on this line, hold down control, and drag it, I can create a parallel line. We'll see two more points of support appear. Notice, this is a parallel line. I didn't change it at all. So, just from one line, I'm already drawing channels in every direction for you, right? That is, without changing it. It's still an ascending channel all the time. Maybe it's actually the same ascending channel, just on a higher time frame. By the way, we're working on the 4-hour chart right now. But basically, this gives us reason to assume that if it keeps working out like this time after time, then maybe we can anchor the same line to the next peak. Again, we take it, hold down control, drag it like this, and place it on the peak. This could very well be an ascending channel like this. And again, it's still the same parallel line. Now let's try to predict what will happen if, say, the chart starts to reverse. How can we construct or anticipate the price movement in the opposite direction? Here we'll need a descending channel. Look, we have a top peak and then, like, one, two, three such peaks, kind of like these spikes, right? We can basically draw a line through them. Let's draw it and color it in some color. Well, since our ascending channels are red, let's make the descending ones green. Well, why not, as they say? So we can draw such a line through these three peaks, and obviously, we can draw another line from the same peak. We can draw another line through this peak as well. So now we have two of these, one channel, roughly speaking, is a consolidation channel, that's when the price moves sideways, and the other is a correction channel, which goes downward. How do we turn this into a channel? We need to take some opposite peak, right? Well, a peak from below. Here we have one peak, two peaks. We can take any of these peaks and try to drag this channel line onto them. Again, hold down control and click. So here we have one channel, and I actually like it, because right here it looks like there was some kind of retest, as if there was a consolidation before it broke through. And right here it got touched, so it seems like the channel might be valid. And basically, we can draw this kind of phantom channel along this wick. But this channel is less likely, because it isn't confirmed in any way. Well, let's, say, make it dashed, for example. We can also try to draw a channel somewhere down here under this support, or, on the contrary, maybe above it, like this. Right? And so, we've got this kind of conditional channel appearing here. If we want to think about consolidation, we just take and draw the consolidation line like this. By the way, it fits really well here too, see? Let's make the consolidation channel blue so it doesn't confuse us. The consolidation one will be blue. So right now, we have three possible scenarios. The first scenario is continued growth, that's the pink channel. The second scenario is a correction, the green price movement channel. And then the third scenario is this light blue channel, the consolidation one. I did all of this, of course, on replay. I don't remember where the price moved after that. And honestly, I would have done it exactly this way anyway. So, trading is always about working with probabilities. You don't know where the price will go, you can only make assumptions, and based on those assumptions, you check using one method, another, a third, a fifth. The price will go somewhere. And your goal is to make sure that the number of your correct assumptions is greater, sorry, I mean greater, not less, than the number of your incorrect assumptions. That's it. You definitely won't be able to never make mistakes. So, let me turn off the replay now, and we'll see which of these scenarios actually played out. And we can see that, for the most part, the price followed the correction channel, the blue channel. But as you can see, we drew it right here. So, all of this, we hadn't seen yet. And just so you understand, this is April, and this is September. So, we predicted the price movement for 5 months, which is almost half a year. And probably later we could have refined this movement somehow, or done something else with it, or worked with this movement on a lower time frame. But one of our channels, well, it worked out quite clearly, and from above it was just perfect. This kind of useful tool works on any market at all, whether it's crypto, stocks, anywhere, even commodities. It will work everywhere, 
and let me show you a modern approach to these indicators, how to draw them automatically. Naturally, we'll be drawing our channels automatically, by the way, using indicators. And the first indicator, which I actually like the most, the one that draws some really decent channels, is called Zigzag Channels by Luxalgo. Here, it draws channels like these. As you can see, they're quite accurate, the middle of the channel is marked, as well as the upper and lower boundaries, and there's predictive power. In other words, it draws them in advance. See? It anticipates in advance that as long as the price moves within this channel, and then, when the trend breaks, it will draw a different channel. And, as you can see, it draws these channels quite accurately. So, in my opinion, this is probably the best option for automatic channel drawing. But there are also a few other indicators that draw similar static channels. Let's turn off Zigzag and select Lux Algo's predictive channels as well. It draws grids like these. This is somewhat similar to grid trading robots. By the way, if you're interested in trading robots, grid bots, and all that, I can show you and actually give you such a bot. If anyone's interested, let me know in the comments. I'll make a video on how to use it and give you a bot. They're good when the price moves sideways, when an asset is just volatile and moves to the right, not up or down, but to the right. They work really well in those situations, but for now, let's keep exploring channels. Look, this indicator immediately suggests some zones. So, there's the 50% mark in the middle of the channel, and basically, or it's green, that's a favorable zone for buying, and the red zone is favorable for selling. But as you can see, it changes direction very, very often, and honestly, these channels don't look very nice. That's why I'd go into its settings and make it a bit less sensitive. For example, I'd set the factor to 8 and double the slope value. Set a stop, for example. And now, the channels already look much more interesting. So, you can try out different settings for this indicator depending on the asset. And in general, it gives pretty decent, more nuanced values, like here is more of a buying zone, and here is more of a selling zone. But this indicator, well, it practically doesn't provide any predictive power. I mean, it's unclear, it just draws something, and kind of assumes that things will continue to the right, so to speak. So it's actually pretty slow. And there's another indicator from Luxalgo. Let's turn this one off. It's called Channel with Patterns. Oh, wait, that's Chap Prime, not Luxalgo. And this one actually does have some predictive power again. See? And here, the channels aren't drawn as lines, but as zones. So, resistance zones and support zones. I think the static channels are more or less clear now. So let's move on to dynamic channels, which are considered more modern. They're all drawn by different indicators. I'll show you two of them and, actually, we'll get to the trading strategy. How can this even work? One of the best indicators with these so-called dynamic channels, at least in my opinion, is Luxalgo AI channels. There are actually a lot of them, but I like this one because it shows, so to speak, the strength of the channel with this sort of cloud, you see? The size of the cloud shows the confidence and the resistance level, right, and how confident the indicator is that this channel will continue to act as resistance. And, as you can see, basically, if the cloud is pretty big, then it's a fairly strong, let's say, support or resistance for the price. And when this cloud is crossed, especially if the cloud is strong, usually a correction follows, which you can actually use as the basis for a trading strategy. And that's exactly what we're going to do now, but not with Luxalgo, we'll use the Tootsie indicator instead. It's called exactly that Turtle Trade Channels Indicator Tootsie, which gives signals like these, long short, long short, long short. And what's more, it also provides signals for exits. So, for example, exit long, long entry, exit long, short entry, exit short. So basically, it gives you both entry and exit signals, and in theory, you could just use this indicator to trade right away. But the question is, how do you check if your trading will be profitable or not? To do that, we need to run it through historical data, and for that, we have to turn it into a strategy, which is exactly what I did. So, here I've actually turned on the strategy, but using it on the 4-hour chart isn't that interesting. Let's switch to the 5-minute chart to really get into some active trading. Alright, remember, this is not financial advice, nor is it a call for you to start trading. Trading is harmful to your health and your mental well-being. This is just an educational video where I'm showing you what can be done and how it's generally done, at least in theory. You are solely responsible for your own money. All right, let's keep going. I'll show you what this strategy is about. As you can see, in these spots, there's an exit long, it exits, and then enters a long position. Basically, I just copied the behavior of the strategy, and it would have shown roughly these kinds of results. So, basically, it's around zero. And, well, there's really nothing interesting about it at all, right? That's why I decided it needed a bit of tweaking, some improvements. First of all, I think its exits aren't that great. I mean, at least on small time frames, these exits, especially when things get hectic, are honestly pretty mediocre. In fact, it's better not to enter at all during those times. 
So, how do we filter out flat markets? The ADX indicator is perfect for this, and of course, I added it to the strategy. So, we can add an ADX filter. Here, ADX length and ADX threshold. Basically, if the ADX is above 20, we enter the trade. If it's below, we don't. Alright, let me enable the ADX filter. And here, oh, let me turn off the indicator so it doesn't get in the way. And as you can see, it's already eliminated about half the trades, so those trades that happened during the flat market have just been removed. Let's see what we've got now. But honestly, it still didn't really work out. So then I thought, maybe it's worth adding another filter using the EMA. So here we use the 150 EMA and display it on the chart. As you can see, I've added this orange smoothing line, and now, if the price is above it, only long trades will be taken, and if it's below, only shorts. So, this should give us a bit more structure. Let's take a look. There we go, there we go. Now, now this strategy is actually showing some positive results. And to make it a bit more interesting on the chart, like on the 5 minute, which is a small trader's time frame, I added the option to remove indicator exit signals and, for example, to close trades with an opposite signal. I don't know how that's going to work out. Let's see now. Well, it actually seems, it actually seems even better, to be honest. But I also added the option to set take profits and stop losses manually. And, for example, if you set a take profit at 0.3 and a stop loss at 0.75, so two and a half times bigger, right, then you can basically get some kind of positive dynamic. You can also add some filters, or, for example, play around with the values of this base indicator, the Tootsie, or maybe experiment with the stops or EMAs. But that's secondary at this point. I've given you the foundation, and I'll be glad if you share any of your own setups or ideas for this indicator. Join my Telegram channel and just leave a comment on this video. It'll be interesting to hear how you've managed to apply this trading strategy. Wishing everyone success. See you.